The New York Times today published a two-month-long investigation into the horrific brutality against women during the October 7 attacks in Israel. The question remains, why are Western feminists still silent? To discuss this and more of today's top stories, I am joined by Sky News host James McPherson and Sky News contributor Evelyn Ray. Thank you both so much for being here tonight. Uh, now, before we begin on this topic, I must warn our audience again that this story contains content that is distressing. Evelyn, I think you will have a unique perspective as a former police detective. What do you make of this piece in the New York Times and why do you think it's taken so many people and agencies so long to acknowledge what happened on October 7? Yeah, thanks. Um, thanks for the question. It's a good one. And I think that's the million dollar question. Why has it taken so long? And if you read the report as well, there is a, a lot of information in there that's quite confusing um, about, I guess, investigation tech tactics and methodologies post uh, crime. Uh, it seems like the victims weren't really given an opportunity to really understand the extent of what happened to them. Certain, I guess, post-mortem uh, testing wasn't done, uh, SAKE kits, which is sexual uh, kits to, to sort of get uh, DNA or anything, all of those things weren't afforded to them. Obviously, things happen in war, but it is very sad to see that we, I guess we won't really know the extent. It is likely worse than what we probably will ever know um, and what will come out because of how it's sort of been handled uh, post-crime. Um, and I guess I think the reason in Australia why uh, this is so shocking to us and the wickedness is so full on for us is because we are relatively sheltered over here. And if you, if you look throughout history, as well as even modern history in certain parts of the world, this is very sadly one of the biggest uh, consequences of war is that the innocent and the vulnerable are usually the ones who suffer the most. You see this with crime, all types of crime. I've seen it, as you mentioned, throughout my career. Unfortunately, women and children cop the brunt of a lot of that. Um, and to be honest, I would, I would really like to see uh, what happens from this moving forward Forward, whether any more information comes out. But I think we are relatively sheltered over here, which is why it is shocking. History shows it isn't really an abnormality. I've seen these sorts of things unfortunately happen in war, but I, I hope and pray for the families of the people who have lost their lives that they get some more answers as time goes on. You know, I think, I mean, part of the difficulty is that uh, so many of the victims are now dead. Um, Evelyn touched on the fact that post-mortems couldn't be done sometimes because of uh, Jewish burial um, rituals. You have to bury uh, the person quite quickly. And for so many other reasons, uh, so many hostages are still in captivity and so many women may take time, as many victims of sexual uh, trauma do, to detail what happened to them. But what do you think it says about us as a world that it's so many people still deny this or minimise it? Well, I mean, it says so much about the world and none of it good. Firstly, it says that anti-Semitism is as bad today as it has ever been, perhaps worse. Secondly, it exposes the complete hypocrisy of the progressive left when it comes to feminism, when it comes to the Me Too movement. And unfortunately, the left have decided you can understand the world through the prism of oppressor and oppressed. And so they've decided, yes, women can be oppressed, but more oppressed are uh, coloured people, um, uh, Muslim people. And so in a battle between Jewish women and coloured uh, Muslim uh, people in Palestine, women lose out. Even and it's if there absolutely are shocking. Jews too. That well, that's adds true too. Yeah, you're right. Complexity that they just can't deal with. The, the other thing you said is, is it's going to take a long time for the true horror to come out. Because even hostages who've been already released will be cognizant of the fact there are still another hundred or so hostages remaining in Gaza. So by speaking out, are they threatening the safety of those who may still be alive and may still be hoping? for freedom. So it's going to be a long time before we truly hear just how horrific this whole situation has been. Yeah, I think you're right on that count. Although one of those hostages um, that was released, Mia Sham, as I yes. uh, spoke about at the top of the show, she's done an interview and it sounds like she is going into greater detail than what we've heard. But look, speaking of denial of these horrific uh, attacks, just last night, former rugby league star Sonny Bill Williams posted this to his social media. Hostages treated worse than animals and raped, proven to be untrue. Children bound together and burned alive, 
proven to be untrue. But you know what is true? 8,000 kids have been killed since October 7th. Unfortunately, since this video was made, it's been over 9,000 children now that have been murdered since October the 7th. Look, it's not that complicated. This ain't a war. This is a genocide. Evelyn, uh, you know, he, the irony is that he just parrots figures from Hamas, a terror organisation, which have not been verified uh, in terms of the death toll, as, as devastating as I know that it would be. Yet he... Uh, brings doubt over evidence that we've seen now, clear evidence that we've seen of uh, violence against women, children, babies, the elderly. Uh, how much more do you think someone like some, someone like Sonny Bill Williams would need to see to be convinced? Look, I don't think Sonny Bill Williams likes the truth to get in the way of a good story. Um, and unfortunately, he, he's doing these de divisive tactics yet again, this virtue signalling that only brings upon division. Um, and and I, I just really, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth. You know, it's like, well, you know, are Palestinians more valuable than Israeli children? Like, why are we doing this tit for tat? It's not blue team versus red team. There should be a reverence for all life. And I'm getting a bit tired of celebrities thinking that they know better than the average Australian and these celebrities who try to use their celebrity status to push things onto the public, whether that be true or not. Um, but, you know, I think we really do need to be focused on reverence of life. I think that uh, regardless of what side of the border that you're on, I think denying reality is not going to do anybody any good and only loses sympathy um, and you know I don't mind people respectfully voicing their opinions on on what's going on in the war as long as they're happy if I respectfully voice my opinion of them but I'm going to be gracious because footy players have been knocked in the head quite a fair <laughs> bit um, so maybe we should you know be, be kind when they do things that are a little bit cringe worthy he, he also had a boxing career so he had even more knocks That's in right. the head but I Double think you're being, I think you're being far too generous there but let's move on to some other big international news and the US state of Maine has booted Trump off the 2024 primary ballot following in the footsteps of Colorado. Now this is related to a clause in the Constitution which refers to officials engaging in insurrections. James we had a feeling there would be more states to follow Colorado and remove Trump from the ballot but it is still shocking to see when it happens, isn't it? It's incredible. How do you remove him from the ballot for insurrection when he's never been charged with insurrection, much less uh, convicted of insurrection? And what kind of an insurrection was it? I mean, there was no plan, there were no weapons, and the supposed leader of the insurrection was telling people to make their voices heard peacefully. So this is clearly political. And if the Democrats think that they are going to unite the country doing this, much less establish credibility, all this speaks to is the fact that they know they have a president who does not have majority support and who does not have a chance in hell of being re-elected. And they're scared stiff of Trump being re-elected, not just because he'll undo their agenda, but they're afraid that Trump will do to them what they are doing to him. And they're running scared and determined not to beat him at the ballot. They're going to make sure he doesn't even make the ballot if they have their way. Evelyn, I've, I've got to say, these sorts of stunts only seem to help uh, Trump in the long run. How do you see all this playing out for him? Yeah, look, nothing screams protecting democracy by ensuring that the people don't have a choice. And like James said, the only reason they would do this is if they thought that they were going to lose and he was going to win. If they weren't threatened by the people voting for him, they would not remove it. But look, every tyranny operates under the guise of telling people that they're being protected from their own choices. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. Like you mentioned, I think it's only going to strengthen the Trump campaign leading up to the election. And as Trump only just said in this last week, the swamp stinks. And he's proved that now. He's going to prove it again. And I think, like you said, there are going to be lots of states that follow, but it's going to be the nail in the coffin. And I think that it's going to make the Republican uh, Party stronger. And I think people are just going to have enough of people trying to control their vote. And they're probably likely going to vote for him just to show them that they can't be controlled.